In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you four of the most important principles in photography. These four things are the foundation of making and capturing good photographs. And understanding these four things will form the foundation of your photography and immediately improve your pictures. Hi, my name is Sean Gallagher. I'm a professional photojournalist and documentary filmmaker. And for the past 15 years, I have been working for some of the world's leading news outlets, producing photographs and short films about the climate crisis and global environmental issues. Here on my channel, I share with you some of the things that I've learned throughout my career to help you improve your own photography, whether you're a beginner, amateur, or even an aspiring professional. In this video, we are going to be talking about some of the basic techniques of photography. These principles are the foundation from which you can, you can build your photographic technique. But don't worry, the concepts aren't hard to get your head around. And once you understand them, you're going to start to see photography in a whole new light. If you like the content on my channel, please like this video, subscribe, and make sure to hit the bell button to receive notifications when I post a new video. So I'm going to be covering these four main concepts, light, color, composition, and moments. Let's get started with the first one. Light is fundamental to photography, but how often do you really think about light? How often have you stopped and looked around at the light around you at any given time? The simple act of stopping and having a look around you and looking at the quality of light and how it falls on surfaces is one of the best things that you can do to start to improve your photography. Simply understanding there are different types of light at different times in the day can transform your photography as you can choose the best times to photograph to make use of the best light. Since this is a beginner's video for photography, I'm going to introduce to you one concept for you to understand and practice. This concept is called the golden hour, and it refers to the first hours in the morning and the last hours in the afternoon. And it's a great time of day to photograph because you often get a beautiful soft orangey red light that always looks good in images. Let's have a look at a few photos to show you what I mean. In this image I took in India, I got up at dawn and went for a walk along the Ganges River as the sun was rising. The morning sky was hazy with a little smoke, so when it combined with the soft orange light from the rising sun, it made a really special lighting situation. In this image from China, I was photographing a river at sunset, so I decided to shoot into the setting sun and try to emphasize the golden sunset by combining a reflection in the water. Of course, you don't always have to shoot into the sun. If you keep your back to the sun, then the golden light will fall across the scene you want to photograph in front of you. Like in this image from Tibet, when I was photographing one of the temples in Lhasa. I took this image at dawn and the sun was on my back as it rose and the beautiful morning light just fell over the temple. So the one principle I want you to take away from this is to go out and shoot during the golden hour. So you can pick a location that gets good light in the mornings and late afternoon and start taking pictures at those times and keep observing how the light changes as you shoot and think about how it changes your images. And after you do this, you'll have really taken your first steps to appreciating light and how it can completely change your photography. Now, the next important concept to understand is about color. If you're a black and white photographer, you might want to skip to the next section. But as a, primarily as a color photographer, for me, color is so important to how I make my images. Uh, I feel that color has the power to invoke emotions. It can grab your viewer's attention and it can dramatically change the visual impact of your images. For me, one of my favorite techniques is just to focus on one primary color within the photograph. By that, I mean in any given photograph, there will be kind of often just one color that really stands out to get people's attention when they view the image. Let's have a look at a, a few examples of that so you can see what I mean. In this image I took in China, you can see that obviously the main color is, 
in the image is yellow or yellowy orange caused by the vivid sand dunes in the desert. The color dominates over two thirds of the frame and it really makes the image stand out when combined with that interesting situation of the man and the lone tree. In this image also taken in China, I wanted to focus on the beautiful blue of the lake I was visiting. The water was so beautiful and turquoise that I knew I wanted to isolate it from everything else around. And I just wanted to focus the viewer's attention on the blue of the lake and the fish swimming in it. Likewise, in this image taken in Cambodia, I wanted to focus the viewer's attention completely on the incredible shades of pink that were coming from a sun setting behind a forest I was visiting. In this image from China, I wanted to contrast the beautiful red of the woman's clothes on the dull and drab gray background. Again, the contrast between the two makes the image more powerful and memorable because of the contrasting use of color. So next time you go out taking photos, try to practice thinking about color by focusing your attention on one or two colors within the frame at any one time. It'll really help focus your viewers' attention when they view your pictures. Experiment with colors and see how they can affect your images. Essentially, composition refers to how you place things within the frame of your photograph. It doesn't really matter what kind of frame you're using, whether it's a traditional horizontal or vertical 35 mil frame or square frame, but thinking about where you position your photograph subject matter will really drastically affect the aesthetic impact of your photograph. Have a look at this image I made in India. I was wandering around the city of Kolkata doing general street photography. And at one intersection, I came across this amazing scene of a child looking out of the window of one of the city's distinctive yellow taxis. Now, notice where in the frame the main subject matter is positioned. Top left. Here I want to introduce to you an important concept called the rule of thirds. If we divide the frame into thirds, you'll notice how the child falls pretty much on where the two lines intersect in the top left. Let's have a look at this photo I made in Indonesia of a woman bathing in a river. Again, you'll notice that I positioned her in the bottom left of the frame, again in the intersection of two of those lines. Now just this simple act of placing your main subject matter in the intersection of those two lines can really make for an interesting and dynamic composition. If you are shooting landscapes or scenes where the horizon is a dominant feature, you can use the rule of thirds to help you decide where to put the horizon. In this image, you can see I put the horizon on the top line and also positioned the main subject matter, the man, in the bottom right where the lines intersect. In this overhead image taken with a drone, I can still use the simple rule of thirds to decide where I put the subject matter, in this case, the islands. This time I run the island down the right hand side line to make an interesting composition. So next time you look through your viewfinder to take images, don't forget the rule of thirds. Some cameras even allow you to show the thirds through the viewfinder or on the screen at the back. So if you've just started out, use them and, and practice the technique. And over time, it will become second nature and you'll automatically start framing your images in more interesting ways because you've learned this principle. As a photographer who's worked primarily in the field of photojournalism, capturing unique moments is really important to me. And the idea is that you're trying to photograph something that is fleeting or momentary or only reveals itself in the briefest of, of time. It's actually quite an advanced technique and something you'll probably need to work on for a long time to master. But it's important to know about it now and start looking for moments because once you're able to start capturing them, it will really start to take your photographs to the next level. At the moment though, let's just look at some examples so you can get an idea about what I mean when we talk about what constitutes an interesting moment. For me, photographing emotions is one of the most satisfying things you can capture in your photographs. Because the, the simple expression of a smile or a laugh or even a tear can take your photograph to a new level of emotional impact on the viewer. People are expressing their emotions all around us and you just need to be ready with your camera to try to capture them. 
When you're out with your camera, always be alert to what is happening around you and try to anticipate when people are going to reveal their emotions. In this image I took in the South Pacific, I saw this puddle on the ground and positioned my camera really low to get the reflection in the frame. And luckily this boy was running past and I was able to freeze the moment and make it dynamic and, and quite interesting image. So when you're next out photographing, make sure to keep your eyes open for moments, both in terms of the emotions that you see from people around you and in the fleeting moments that are actually happening all the time in daily life just around us. Challenge yourself to try to capture those moments. It's not easy, but the more you practice looking for them and trying to capture them, the better you'll become at it and your pictures will improve. So let's bring together everything that we've learned about. We talked about the importance of light and how it's fundamental to photography. We looked at color and how it can transform your images. And we looked at composition, and how it can make something visually interesting for your viewer. And finally, we talked about emotion, about how capturing that can take your photographs to a new level. As always, getting out in the real world is the best way that you can learn about photography. So pick up your camera, pick one or two of the ideas that we've talked about in this video and go out and practice. Experiment, take lots of shots, have fun, but try to keep in mind some of the concepts that we've talked about in this video today. If you have any questions about any of the things that I've discussed in this video, please leave a comment below and I'll try to write back to you. Which is the most challenging concept that you found from this video? Is it capturing a moment or thinking about compositions? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to learn more about the basics of photography, why not watch another one of the videos in my series? You can find that just here. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can get the latest updates when I post new videos about photography and filmmaking.